I've been sent two miniatures from a new miniature line, the Imari. Dave from Mini Wargaming sent me these space dwarves from the Ravaged Star Universe. These are 3D prints. The real miniatures don't actually exist yet. And I know very little about them. But they are the follow-up to the veil-touched miniatures that I've made several videos on in the past. Are they in fact dwarves? I don't know. Depends on what happens in space, I guess. The aesthetics are kind of dwarven. The Norse style, the beards, the weaponry. The classic small stature is kind of gone. I've always imagined the weight of mountains was the reason for dwarven compactness. Uh, that and the relative practical nature of not having to dig large tunnels. But in space? Who knows what happens in space? For one, there's not much gravity going around. Oh, and I've named them Billy and Dusty. This is not, by the way, a sponsored video. I just like Space Dwarves, and I like Dave's venture. Recent Warhammer Space Dwarves have been favoured orange, a tempting prospect, yet I'm apparently more of a traditionalist than I thought. Dwarves are metal. Dwarves are stone. Dwarves are traditionalists. If you're going to be stuck in space, your holy mountain nuked 35,000 years ago, what are you going to do? Stick to the old ways, of course. Listen to your king, grow your beard, and dress in metal. I like a start, as much as the next painter. Yet I prefer mine to set a mood. Something that inspires me to paint. A zenithal prime, for example, is handy for many things. But it also inspires me to paint, even if I disregard the handy aspects. In this case, I want a grim, dark, metallic start. To put my mind in the right frame. There's no plan. There's no do this first, because it's part of the recipe. I just want to see something that triggers me to keep painting. After a black prime, I airbrushed on a bronze metallic paint. In the end, I'm not sure if I'm going for bronze or gold. Not that it's important, really. I kind of try to be light-handed with the airbrush, not completely flooding the mini with paint. Sort of spraying from above as much as possible to get a bit of black still in the recesses and the shaded areas. I kind of don't like metal paint, for reasons. But I'm trying hard to learn. On the weaponry and the excessiveness in ammunition and explosives, I overbrush on a silver. Light hand, flat brush, stroking the surface, trying not to get paint in the crevices. And then an oil paint based wash. This to darken down the crevices, give me some grungy grim dark vibes that hopefully trigger the rest of the paint job. Making an oil wash is very simple. Mixing a little bit of oil paint, in this case lamp black, with white spirit. In this case odorless white spirit. There's two major reasons I like to use oil washes instead of acrylic washes. First is that the flow can be quite impressive. The nature of white spirit, the lack of surface tension, makes very effective washes. Especially for something like pin washing. The second reason is that it's very possible to clean up some of the wash, wash that has ended up in places I don't want. The oil and the white spirit mix can be rubbed off with the help of a q-tip or sponge and a bit of white spirit, to a certain degree. So in this case I pretty much cover the miniature entirely to then clean off the raised areas with a q-tip moist with white spirit. Normally metallic paints, because of their glossy surface, cleans up real well. In this case, it kind of didn't. I'd not quite counted on the fact that these miniatures are 3D printed with rather thick layers. They're not only visible in places, but even the ones not visible act as traps for the wash. Nothing that would have happened on something like a hard plastic miniature. This can be good to bear in mind. Washes don't act quite the same on some 3D prints as on solid plastic. And not on filament printed terrain either, for example, where print lines can be rather present. Still, I got a decent result that when dry looked like a very good place to start painting. But before that, I varnished with a regular acrylic varnish. I like the different steps of painting miniatures. I never expect to be done in one sitting. 
I have multiple projects going to work on one while the other dries and, and vice versa. And they give me time to think on what to do next. I kind of see the benefit in waiting for oil paint or varnishes to dry. Next is some simple filling in the blocks of colors, traditional dwarven blue. I was choosing between green or blue, feels like decent minor colors. There's some brown leather skin tones, kind of want them to be towards the pink spectrum, some beards, they're gonna have to be orange, very traditional that as well. In the end, there's not huge amounts of details that need to be painted, most of these fellows are armor and guns. After that, I cover everything I just painted, excluding the metals, of course, uh, but including the blue, with Agrax Earthshade. A quick jump back into grimdark land. It's the first time in a year or so that I use a citadel wash, and I, of course, spilled half of it by uh, knocking the pot over. For the skin tones, I'm going for a sandalwood, and then a very pale moon ray flesh doing some rather distinct highlights. In my mind, this is now some sort of tabletop painting, trying to achieve some character and depth visible at a few feet without any award-winning blending. I still enjoy attempting to put highlights in the right places, though. I guess a lot of time can be saved by knowing where to put the paint. The beard, I had some issues with experimenting a bit with an alternative orange. Something more red and muted instead of the classic warm orange dwarven beard. In the end, I managed to get something that resembled a slightly dried grapefruit. This I'll in the end go back in and correct, regressing to traditions once more. A warm orange beard for Billy. Painting with metallic paints, uh, I've been using a spare, small, wet palette. I tend to have uh, accidents sometimes, water-based accidents, paint mixing with each other on the palette, and it's rather annoying when metallic flakes just get everywhere. So I now have a metallic palette. I drip some airbrush thinner on the palette as well to use uh, as a thinner for the metallic paint. For me, it seems to work better than just regular water. I try to highlight the brass or gold where it would catch the light or where it would be a little more rubbed, a bit more wear and tear, leaving the duller, darker shades as much as I can to get a nice contrast going. I try to twist and turn the miniature a lot. Sometimes it's difficult to see what the paint is doing, but not when it catches the light, something that happens when you turn it around a lot. The paints I used were first a Necro Gold and then the Parido Alchemy, both from Scale 75. Similarly, I did some delicate highlights with the silver. This is the Vallejo Metal Color Airbrush colors. After that, on all the silvery bits where it seemed necessary, I added some Vallejo Streaking Grime. This has that green machine oil vibe going and I like it as a nasty tint to things just to break up the monotony of the metallic paint. Usually when the term streaking grime is used, it's in reference to the enamel wash version. This is not that. This is regular acrylic effect paint that is sort of semi-transparent. I needed a bit of future and sci-fi into this traditional dwarven scheme. Some pink or magenta on the cool eyepieces seemed in order. I painted on a bit of white first to get some decent coverage, then painted on some magenta, trying to get it darker around the edges and brighter towards the center. Finally, some very bright reflections like light reflecting off the glass surface. For the base, I mainly used brown and blue already in my wet palette to give some life and texture to the dark base. But I kind of don't feel like doing something super vibrant here. The metallic, the larger parts of the miniatures, it's, I don't know, a little delicate? A vibrant base would be too much, I feel. And you might be thinking we're done now, but I'm actually going to jump back to a bit more oil paint shenanigans. I'm going to call this the adding a bit of character part. I do it rather often. It might be because of my paint jobs evolve while I paint. I'm not dead set on looks, on how to get there from the start. I now want to add a bit more colour tints, a few more dimensions to the paint job. Another type of personality might as well have done that from the start using acrylic paints. I just find this more fun and a little easier. Diluting the paints quite a lot, I sort of glaze on the oil paint. 
it's very easy to create smooth gradients, sort of using a dry brush to smudge the paint or a brush damp with white spirit as a sort of eraser. Adding some drama to the skin with the help of violet, magenta and purple madder oil paints, as well as tinting in some colorations on the gold armor using the very same paints, giving it a slight alien vibe, almost into some kind of chaos territory. These oil paints will dull down quite a bit when they dry because of the heavy dilution with white spirit. So if you try this, don't be afraid to exaggerate. But even if not as vibrant, the oil paints will definitely cover some of the shine of the metallic paint. Another chance to add a bit of that grim dark vibe. For the blue parts, I heavily diluted an indigo with a lot of white spirit. I just want this to darken down the uttermost edges, adding some contrast and distinction. In the end, all this will be discreet, small touches. Yet I think it's one of the most enjoyable stages, like adding makeup to the miniature or something. I added a bit of rust to the weaponry. I know, these folk, if anyone, would take care of their metals, oiled rags at the ready. But I can't help myself. In miniature wargaming, every weapon, every blade, every piece of armor shouts out for a good rusting. It's just the way of things. Off camera, I added some violet to the bases and some warmer tones to Billy's beard. It was then just a matter of letting these dry overnight in a warm and dry place and varnish them again after that, just to bring all the different shines together. I like that. Unfortunately, when preparing to varnish the next day, I dropped dusty on my concrete floor. Even though these are printed in rather durable resin, there was quite the damage done. Luckily, it was easy to glue back together again. This is one of the downsides of resin. Accidents happen when gaming, and it's sad to have to suck up half your mini in the vacuum cleaner. Fortunately, these Imari will be plastic, just like the veil touched, and those minis can take a beating. After varnishing everything with a regular matte varnish, still kind of shiny to my eyes, I brush on an ultra matte varnish on everything but the metallics. This will give the metallics a chance to shine a bit, whereas cloth, leather and skin stays very matte indeed. I don't know much about the coming campaign for these miniatures. I put a link down in the description to the campaign preview on GameFound if you want to check it out. I'm also going to ask Dave to send me more dwarves. Hopefully I can make another video soon painting some more from the range and maybe we can get told some stories about these not so dwarven space dwarves. I hope you enjoyed this video. There's several ways you can support the continued creation of videos like this one. Like and subscribe. Tell your friends. Recommend me to your mum. There's a Patreon linked in the description. If you join, you can get the great reward of joining the 52 Miniatures Discord server, where you can chat not only to me, but to a lovely community of painters and hobbyists. You can super comment here on YouTube or during one of my many live streams. There is also links down below to the merchandising places. Thanks for watching and thanks to Dave from Mini Wargaming for the miniatures. Bye.